Welcome everyone. Today I will explain the plot of a 2005 sci-fi horror film called Locusts, The Eighth Plague. Locust swarms have been devastating crops and causing major agricultural damage that has led to famine and starvation for quite some time. Grey Wolf and the genius scientist Ross Snow of Silogen are the masterminds behind the new bioengineered locust species known as the X Swarm. These new species are engineered to feed on the pests that are destroying the crops. X swarms are basically bioengineered locust drones that cannot breed on their own and have a short lifespan of only two days. This not only acts as a failsafe, but also benefits the research center in the long run, as the farmers have to keep buying more of these locusts. Silogen Research Center is 15 miles outside Prairie, Idaho, and currently they are conducting final tests on these species before they can release them to the market. During the test, the locusts are released onto the crops with their natural pest. All these locusts do is attack the pests, leaving the crops untouched. After the completion of the test, the pheromone attracts this locust back into the holding pen, and the dome is scanned. The experiment can be considered a success, as there is not even a single live bug left, and the crop is fine as well. But the beeping sound indicates something has gone horribly wrong, and they are about to find out that the holding pen is empty. Turns out, one of the external vents did not close completely due to a technical error. Since the vent is jammed, it requires to be manually closed. Bartlett goes to close the vent, but all he hears is the static interference at his end. Then, his attention is diverted to the noise coming from his behind. Just when he moves a few steps towards the source of the noise, a huge swarm of locusts comes flying in his direction and attacks him. Since the vent remains open, the entire swarm escapes from the lab after feeding on the man. Later, Ross goes to check on the shaft and witnesses a dreadful scene of splattered blood and the remains of body parts. With a blood-covered boot, he returns back to Gary's office to inform him about the issue. Gary tells him not to say a word about it to anybody, but Ross argues that they must contact the Department of Agriculture immediately and have them set a quarantine zone until the swarm dies off. But Gary is not ready to take this risk. They have poured great fortune and dedicated many years for this project to come to life. Gary can't let all this hard work go down the drain. However, he does not seem worried at all, thanks to two facts. First, the species does not harm the crop at all. And second, the entire swarm will die out in just two days. But Ross does not think of it like this. He says that letting such a voracious swarm loose for even two days is dangerous, and the probability of them spreading to large geographical areas is too high. Meanwhile, Colt Dunton pays a visit to his customer and friend Hank and his wife Agatha. Colt is an entomologist who was formerly working for Silogen. While the project of bioengineered locust was in process, he warned Gary and Ross about the project going wrong, but they didn't listen to him. After that, he no longer felt the need to stay in Silogen and resigned. Now, he operates an all-organic pesticide company which is flourishing in Idaho. So, Colt has come here today to remind them about the payment for his last work. The couple asks him to drop by the next day to collect his payment. After that, he returns back to his girlfriend, Vicky, who happens to be the daughter of Ross Snow. The next day, when Hank is out harvesting, the Husker Blades suddenly get stuck in something. He comes out and finds the remains of a dead cow stuck in the blades. When Hank is telling about the situation to Agatha through the transceiver, Agatha hears some noise coming from the cornfield. She goes to check on it and finds a motorbike there. A few meters away, the horrendous dead body of Mike scares her. She asks Hank to come immediately, but when Hank sees his combine covered in locusts, he warns her to go back to her truck and go away. The sad thing is that they are both killed by the locusts right away. As scheduled, when Colt comes to get his payment, he notices dead locusts on his way. Deep inside the field, the scene of his dead friend shocks him. Then, he goes to USDA in Prairie, where his girlfriend works. The issue seems to be out of control, as the USDA is crowded with farmers and mutilated animals are brought in for investigation. Vicky is having a hard time dealing with the issue, since they don't know the root cause of it. As soon as he meets Vicky, Colt tells her that Hank is killed and he believes that he was attacked by the desert locusts as the crops are unharmed. Colt offers to help her to examine the mutilated animal parts, but the access is restricted to USDA only. He convinces Vicky that if these cases are related to the locusts, then they would need the help of an entomologist. Then, with the safety garb on, they enter the lab to look at the mutilated head of the animal. Shortly after, Colt pulls out a locust from inside its head. Since locusts are herbivorous in nature, to clear their doubt, they analyze the locust's stomach and find tissues there. Colt tells Vicky that this might be related to her father, Ross, 
and his partner Gary. He tells Vicky that they were working on a bioengineered bug that would eat another bug. Colt also mentions that he had warned them about things going south. Somewhere in the Frisco picnic ground, a family of three is having a little day out. Suddenly, the swarm of locusts attacks them. The boy barely makes it out alive as his mother locks him in the car. But unfortunately, right in front of his eyes, he sees his parents get killed. Later on, the sheriff on duty finds the boy in an SUV, covered with slime and dead locusts. He carries the boy into his vehicle and drives off as the locusts start chasing them. Then he brings the boy to the hospital. On the other side, Colt goes to confront Ross and asks him to help control the swarm. Initially, Ross tries lying to him, saying that this has nothing to do with their experiment. But since there is no point hiding it from him, Ross admits the release of X Swarm to be an accident. Nevertheless, he assures that the swarm is programmed to have a two-day lifespan. Immediately after that, Gary calls Ross and asks how much Colt knows. Ross replies that he knows everything. Now that it has come to this point, Gary suggests Ross get rid of all the backup research files along with the eggs and larvae. He says that this is just a necessary setback for a time being and that they will start over again in the near future. Now, a nation-level effort is initiated in regard to the issue. Representing the government, Alex Grimes comes to meet Greg Bollard, who is taking care of the locust problem in North America. Alex briefs the situation in Idaho and asks him if there is some insight he can provide. Greg believes that if the bioengineered locusts are carnivorous, then they are bound to bring a major catastrophe to mankind. Meanwhile, Colt calls Vicky to inform Silogen of being responsible for this outbreak. He also let her know that, as per her father, the swarm should be dead by tomorrow morning. However, they need to find the swarm before they can do further damage. Vicky says an emergency response team is being sent, which should arrive in Idaho by the afternoon. In the USDA office, showing the area map, Vicky tells Colt that the swarm is seen sticking to a relatively small area. But Colt is worried that the spread might be rapid once the feeding ground is cleared. Then, as soon as Vicky gets a call informing her about the boy who survived the locust attack, they make their way to the Prairie General Hospital. Both of the unsightly dead bodies of Kyle's parents are brought to the hospital. After looking at them, they visit the boy who is irresponsive and in a perplexed state. Colt goes to meet the sheriff, leaving Vicky with the kid. Then, Colt looks at the state of the police car and is astounded to see it covered with locusts and slime. He grabs one of the locusts and rushes inside the hospital, and with permission, he uses the hospital lab to examine the locust. The situation is a lot worse than they have anticipated, because the swarm is now breeding. Despite being bioengineered drones, some mutations have enabled the swarm to breed, multiplying the insects as they speak. Immediately, Colt and Vicky go to pick up Greg, and on the way back, Vicky updates him about the situation and alerts him about the swarm's adaptation and breeding. The most important thing for them to do now is to find the nest and destroy it. For this, they decide to start with the Frisco picnic ground. Eventually, they reach the cave, which turns out to be the nest. Cautiously, Colt takes some larvae samples for the research, and with their gas masks on, they fume the whole cave with the pesticide. Colt and Vicky notice the locust feeding on the pesticide that is spilled on Vicky's shoe. Seeing this, they notify Greg that the pesticide is not working and ask him to pull out. And since the pesticide is useless against these creatures, Greg orders his men to burn them with firepower. This only agitated the swarms that are now at their tail. While running, Vicky falls on the ground and Colt covers her up with his own body. The voracious locusts attack and kill other men, but surprisingly, they did not attack Colt and Vicky. Afterward, Greg contacts Alex to fill in his side of the situation. Alex tells him the use of the military-grade pesticide UD-66 will be done ASAP. When Greg relays this message to Colt and Vicky, Colt rejects the idea because the poisonous effect is not limited to just bugs and can harm the whole environment. The situation is urgent, so despite Cole's disapproval, Vicky permits Greg to continue as he sees fit. Not long after, many incidents of people being attacked are reported. Locusts rampaging in the nearby amusement park leads to a huge number of casualties. One thing they can be sure of is that the swarm is moving at a rapid pace due to the destruction of its last nest. Just then, Greg comes up with the idea of luring the swarm with lots of livestock gathered in one place and killing it with a blow of UD-66. Vicky demands a better alternative, so Greg tells her to go with U-45, which is less poisonous than UD-66. They carry out as they plan, and the choppers are in a standby position, waiting for Greg's command to release the pesticide. On the other hand, Colt is doing his own research on locusts with pesticides. He finds out that the locusts are not only resistant to the pesticides, 
but they are in fact attracted to them. Colt immediately calls Vicky and tells her that they need to abort the plan. Greg tries calling the chopper, but there is interference with the radio transmission and he fails to contact them, and as a result, many people are killed. Now, the National Guard is mobilized and evacuation of the public is prioritized. Greg urges for UD-66 to be used immediately. However, Colt still tries to convince him that it's hardwired into the locust systems to be attracted to chemical pesticides. This is why the swarm did not attack him and Vicky, as they only consume organic food and there is negligible chemical pesticide in their bodies. Hearing a logical argument, Vicky finds this sensible. Furthermore, Colt adds that they need to use something that the species do not know how to deal with, and he knows exactly what it is. Colt takes Greg's truck to the airfield as the city is now under curfew. He fills the chopper with his organic pesticide and sets off. Then, he successfully kills the swarms of locusts in the city by spreading the organic pesticide all over them. But still, it was too early to celebrate. They did not know that the swarm had split earlier, and he just managed to take out a subswarm. Now, they have run out of organic pesticides, and it requires days to produce a new batch of it. As a last hope, Vicky and Greg go to meet Ross to ask if he can help, whereas Colt heads to the airfield. Ross tells them that the only solution is to use pheromones to lure the swarm into the dome and then blow up the whole facility. Meanwhile, Gray decides to flee to New York, but his life ends at the hands of his beloved creation. Then, Ross sends a tanker of pheromones in Colt's direction, and after loading it, Colt is now airborne. The pheromone lures the swarm to Silogen's research dome, where it is trapped with a radio explosive. But just at the time of detonating, the swarm's interference hinders the signal, and the explosive is halted. Since someone has to go and manually set it off, Guilty Ross volunteers to sacrifice himself. He has 30 seconds to make it out to the dome before the explosion, but he puts his life on the line and makes sure to detonate the bomb, blowing up the whole dome. After that, everyone thinks that they have finally gotten rid of the locusts, but is it really over? As the movie comes to an end, somewhere outside of Indiana, we see a Silogen's truck transporting live specimens of locusts.